again. This is Tim here, reporting from an outdoor location. Um, as you can see, I've strung up a tarp in some woods here. Uh, I've been trying to spot some wildlife, but there's not a lot going on, actually, if I'm honest. So I think after I've done this, I'll probably go home into the warm, make a cup of tea and put my slippers on. But before I do that, I want to have a little chat with you. Um, now, you will have seen just then some footage f uh, of, of my little boy in a different place, in a bird reserve in Conwy, one of my favourite places. And we were on the lookout for migrating birds. So the first thing I'd like you to do is I would like you to get ready because I'm going to ask you to pause this video in a minute. So get ready to pause this video. Um, before you do, you're going to want to know what I'm going to ask you to talk about, which is I want you to talk about what you know about migration. OK, so you've got in five seconds, it's pausing time. So five, five, four, three, two. I didn't do that very well. Pause. Welcome back. OK, so what kind of things did you get, guys? Um, so I guess probably you got some stuff about um, animals maybe moving around the world in search of different food or different climate and, uh, and sometimes travelling hundreds and thousands of miles. And do you know what? If you did, you're spot on. One of nature's most amazing spectacles. Um, we see... Um, animals with this kind of inbuilt GPS system that tells them not only where to go and how to get there but also when to go the right time of year to fly or to move across to build better nests in warmer places or to go in search of food and, and, and all that kind of stuff I think it's amazing and when me and my son were in Conwy we saw some great examples of migratory birds so some godwits some widgeon, some wimbrel, some egrets, some uh, geese, some ducks, some really cool kind of migrating birds. And, and it's not just birds that migrate either. All sorts of animals can migrate in search of food uh, and warmer climate. And so I, it's just amazing. So do, if you're interested in nature, do do some research on migration. Amazing. Anyway, why on earth? Am I talking to you under a tarp, in the rain, in an Advent service about migration? Well, we've been looking at refugees and actually, just like some of the birds and the animals that travel hundreds and thousands of miles for safety, so do refugees. And refugees have to do this for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's because of dangers and war. Sometimes it's in pursuit of a better life because the life that they are leading at the moment is unsafe. All sorts of different, very, very sad reasons that refugees feel that they need to flee their country. And you know, one of the things that I often think about um, as a Christian is how do we make our communities welcoming to people like refugees you know because the cool thing about Conwy Bird Reserve is it's super welcoming isn't it and the theme of our our advent service today is welcome and joy and you know I guess the thing is is that the birds and the animals that come to the the uh, the bird reserve they're welcome to a safe place to a place where they know that they'll get food and they know that there won't be pollution and they know that they'll be protected and I'm kind of wondering to myself you know what can we do what can we do in our communities to be more welcoming and you know I was thinking uh, as a Christian I was thinking about Jesus and I was thinking about all the different things that Jesus did and you know what the really cool thing I think about Jesus was that he met people's needs. So, you know, uh, you can remember lots of different stories about like when Jesus healed someone or when they needed food, he fed them. When they needed teaching and a story, he told them a story and teaching. Basically, like, I think it's really cool that Jesus met people's needs. And I'm wondering, 
you know how do we within our communities meet the needs of refugees and how do we meet the needs of people and how do we welcome them how do we welcome them so that is a big old challenge isn't it and maybe we'll spend some time next praying about that and reflecting on how we might do that but until then i am going to get i think it's stopped raining so i am going to make my way down this hillside without tripping over because that would be embarrassing and i'm going to say ta-ta for now so ta-ta for now Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Rich in love 
and my time has come. Still, my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever more. Bless the Lord. So